is primarily a manifestation of anxiety. What is the management of agoraphobia? So we have two options, uh, psychological treatment and medications. In psychological treatment, always remember we first educate the patient and we can provide them some uh, written material uh, for, this, uh, for their disease so that they can learn from it. So number one is self-help psychoeducation. Number two, we will provide, uh, we will tell them how to relax uh, their cells in such an anxiety provoking states and relaxation exercises are important. Exposure treatment and CBT. CBT is cognitive behavioral therapy. The medications recommended for um, agoraphobia are enzolytics drug. Uh, we can give benzodiazepine, but uh, remember it has dependence potential, so we will give them for a shorter period. Number two, and the major uh, role is of SSRI, antidepressant drugs. TCAs can be given and SNRIs can be given. So number two, uh, we have social phobia. Uh, the social phobia uh, is again, the psychological, behavioral, or autonomic symptoms must be primary manifestation of anxiety and should not be secondary to other symptoms such as delusion or obsessional thoughts. What are social phobias? The anxiety must be restricted to or predominate in particular social situation, okay? It, it, it has to be occur in particular social situation where the person has this uh, thought that he might uh, going to do something embarrassing in front of uh, different people. So he develops social uh, phobia and social anxieties. The underlying fear is of embarrassing himself or doing something embarrassing in front of other people. Number three, the phobic situation is avoided whenever possible. Avoidance is here as well. So we can see social as its name indicate, it has phobia in social situations and again, it has avoidance, avoidance behavior. And number one is again, the same psychological behavior, autonomic symptoms must be a primary manifestation of anxiety and it is not secondary to any other symptoms. So what is the management of social uh, anxiety, social phobia? Uh, again, it has two components, psychological treatment and medications. So the psychological treatment, we have self-help books and psychoeducation for the patient. CBD, we have uh, cognitive behavior therapy and dynamic psychotherapy. Uh, coming towards the medications, SSRIs and SNRIs are recommended for the use in uh, social phobias. What are specific phobias? As its name indicates, a specific phobia must be phobic with some specific object. So the psychological and autonomic symptoms must be primarily manifestation of anxiety and not secondary to other symptoms such as delusion or obsessional thoughts. We have to exclude that the anxiety is only because of their psychological state of mind or autonomic symptom. Uh, are, uh, it's a primary manifestation of anxiety. And we have to exclude that it's not because of the delusional or obsessional thoughts then only we can say that this person is having anxiety disorder. Number two is the anxiety must be present to the presence of a particular phobic object or situation. So there, there must be some specific object of which patient uh, has this phobia. Like some has uh, fear of heights, some people have uh, this fear of uh, fire and uh, uh, some people have uh, this phobia of snakes and different animals. So they, they have this specific phobia related to that object or that situation, and they remain fine and, fine and calm in between those, uh, when, when, the object, when this object or situation is not around them. So uh, it has to be present uh, only uh, in the presence of that particular object. The third and the most important, again, is avoidance. avoidance. The phobic situation is avoided whenever possible that patient avoid going to such places in which there is, a, if, if he has high phobia, he, he will uh, avoid hiking and other stuff. And uh, if he has this animal phobia or snake phobia, he will avoid such places where an, animals or snakes farm. So what is the treatment options we have? Again, it is uh, the specific phobia we have psychoeducation and uh, 
CBD and all such and exposure and for uh, physiology uh, and for uh, medications we can give SSRI and SNRIs. So what is what is the treatment? Uh, what, uh, what is panic disorder? For a definite diagnosis, several severe attacks of autonomic anxiety should have occurred within a period of about one month. We need to see what uh, what is panic disorder. We need to understand that a patient might have several severe mini attacks of autonomic anxiety, and uh, it has occurred within a period of one month. In circumstances where there is no objective danger, okay, we have to see that this anxiety attacks occur when there is no objective danger at all. No, nothing, no object, no specific object, no, uh, no social contact. It, it occurs all of a sudden without being confined to known or predictable situations. And number four, with comparative freedom from anxiety symptoms between attacks. So this is important. He remains fine and uh, free from anxiety symptoms between these attacks. Although anticipatory anxiety is common. So what is anticipatory anxiety? He is not in that particular situation, but he anticipates about that situation and develop anxiety as a response. So for panic disorder, uh, first of all, he had several attacks of this autonomic instability, uh, which have occurred in a period of at least one month. Number two, there is no objective danger. Number three, without being confined to known or predictable situation. And number four, uh, it can occur anywhere, anywhere. It's unpredictable. Its management is psychological and medications can also help. So in psychological treatment, we can give self-help books and psychoeducation. We can uh, tell the patient or guide the patient about relaxation exercises. We can tell them and guide them about pro progressive muscle relaxation exercises. And uh, again, CBD, cognitive behavioral therapy can also help the patient in managing their panic uh, symptoms. The medications which we usually recommend for this disorder are SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, tricyclic antidepressants, TCAs, and SNRIs. So this is the management of panic disorder. Now, the last one is generalized anxiety disorder. So as its name indicates, the sufferer must have primary symptom of anxiety most of the day for at least several weeks at a time, and usually for several months. It, it has to be like six months or more than that. These symptoms should usually have the involvement of uh, these elements, like they have apprehension, motor tension, and autonomic overactivity. So what, what is apprehension? Apprehension is worrying about the future misfortunes, feeling on the edge, difficulty in concentration, etc. What is the motor tension? It's restlessness, fidgeting, tension, headaches, trembling, and then inability to relax. And autonomic overactivity, they might develop lightheadedness, sweating, tachycardia, or tachypnea, epigastric discomfort, dizziness, dry mouth, etc. So, for generalized anxiety disorder, they have mentioned the months. Okay, so uh, it has several months of history. Uh, like it has to be for like a uh, patient will say that I'm I'm having these symptoms for the last last one year for the last six uh, six months. And it has been going on. And generalized anxiety, again, it has no specific uh, uh, specific, uh, specific thing for that. Like it, it has to, uh, uh, it can occur anywhere, anytime. And this anxiety symptoms, uh, most of the day, every day for like several weeks in a time. It causes significant distress in their daily functioning. In the last line, you can see. Uh, this anxiety will uh, will have a significant distress in their uh, have caused a significant distress in their daily functioning. There's so much so anxiety that they cannot just manage that. For generalized uh, anxiety disorders, we have psychological treatment and medications as well. Again, the psychological treatment is self-help books and psychoeducation. 
relaxation exercises and cognitive behavioral therapy. You have seen that all of the uh, anxiety disorders have uh, almost same management, psychological management. We first need to educate the patient about their illness, about their anxiety provoking things that uh, provoke their anxieties. And we need to guide them how to manage those uh, by themselves. So uh, we can tell uh, tell them to relax, to uh, to do their some mental work, some exercises, some progressive muscle relaxations to calm down in that anxiety panic state. And then coming towards the medication. So uh, as you know, the generalized anxiety disorder is a is a has a big history, has a long history. So the treatment uh, we will going to divide it into short term treatment and long term treatment. Um, Short-term treatment, we can give benzodiazepines, longer-acting ones, uh, which have longer half-lives, and, and bispiron. And for long-term treatment, we can give SSRIs, SNRIs, and pregabalin. It's an anticonvulsant pregabalin, and it has a role in managing uh, generalized anxiety disorder. So these uh, are the few anxiety disorders which we have covered so far. We have covered agoraphobia with and without panic disorder, social phobia, and specific phobia, panic disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, etc. And uh, now we will move on towards our OCD, which is obsessive compulsive disorder. So, what is the definition of obsessive compulsive disorder? It is characterized by the presence of either obsessions or compulsions, but commonly both. The symptoms can cause significant functional impairment and or distress. So it, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, we, have, we can either have obsessions or compulsions, but usually we have seen both, obsessions and compulsions, both. Uh, and the symptoms have, um, can cause significant functional impairment and or distress to the patient. So what are obsessions? We first need to uh, understand what obsessions are. An obsession is defined as an unwanted intrusive thoughts, image or urge. So it's an unwanted intrusive thought, intrusive image or intrusive urge that repeatedly enters the person's mind. So it, I hope you understand that intrusive thoughts, images and urges that repeatedly enters the person's mind uh, are known as obsessions. And what are compulsions? Compulsions are repetitive behaviors or mental acts that the person feels driven to perform. A compulsion can either be overt or observable by others, such as checking the that the door is locked or not, or a covert mental act that cannot be observed, such as repeating a certain phrase in one's mind. So compulsions are repetitive behaviors or mental acts. These are repetitive behavior compulsions or mental acts and obsessions are unwanted repeated thoughts, images or urges. So there is a difference between obsessions are thoughts and compulsions are the behavior or mental acts that the person feels driven to perform. A compulsion, what, what they said in the second uh, line that the compulsion has either, uh, the compulsion can either be overt and observable. Like if I'm doing repetitive some work, I'm washing my hands, it is observable by others. Like checking the door, it is observable by others. But it can be a covert mental act. Like I'm repeating or counting it, uh, the blocks uh, on the table in my mind again and again. So this is, uh, it is going to be a covert mental act and nobody can observe what, what I'm doing. So a covert mental act that cannot observe, such as repeating a certain phrase or counting in one's mind. So, what are obsessional ruminations? These are internal debates in which arguments for and against even the simplest everyday actions are reviewed endlessly. Okay? I'm walking uh, on the roadside and I've seen a beggar is asking for some money or anything. And I kept on thinking about him all the day long. And I'm, I'm questioning myself, uh, why, why haven't I give, give him some money? And then if I give him some money, uh, he, he will going to give some food or provide some food to his family. And all this thing is going on in my, in my mind endlessly. 
the whole day i'm thinking about that and when i try to like stop these thoughts i i'm i'm unable to stop these thoughts these are internal debates debates going inside my mind in which the arguments for and against the even the simplest everyday actions are reviewed endlessly okay so uh, this is called obsessional ruminations and what are obsessional doubts these concern actions that may not have been completed adequately like i have this thought that have i switched the uh, tap have i switched the lights off uh, turning off gas tap etc while other doubts concern actions that might harm other people and there may be doubts related to religious convictions or observances like when i am offering prayer i have oh, uh, have i performed two rakats or three rakats of uh, prayers or what what i am missing something like i have these doubts obsessional doubts coming in my mind again and again so the, uh, these concern actions that may have not been completed adequately so these are known as obsessional thoughts uh, obsessional doubts so what are obsessional impulses these are the urges to perform x usually violent or embarrassing kind okay i have this urge oh i'm going to uh, in i'm going to injure a child uh, i i i poke a knife in someone's back or something like that or i have leaping in front of a car and this embarrassing or violent act is coming uh, this urge is coming in repeatedly in my mind again and again uh, so this is known as obsessional impulses impulse to do any any violent act or any uh, any act which is of embarrassing kind so this these are known as obsessional impulses what are uh, obsessional rituals it includes both mental activities such as counting repeatedly and uh, yeah uh, or repeating but endless behaviors example washing hands 20 or more times per day so these these rituals we develop after these thoughts like i i have this contaminated hands or i have these dirty hands and they will only going to clean if i wash my hands 20 times uh, a day so i have this thing in my mind that after washing only 20 times i'm going to be clean so i'll do this every time whenever i go to the washroom i'll wa wash my hands 20 times so the, these these obsessions i have developed uh, in this type of uh, obsessional rituals uh, it include both mental activities and repeated but senseless behaviors as well so some rituals have connection with obsessional thoughts that precede them the patients are usually aware that these are illogical and they usually uh, try to hide those, uh, these thoughts so what are the um, sub types of ocds as we have seen contamination obsessions with cleaning compulsions what we have read uh, up till now that uh, these obsessions are are the thoughts there are the repeated thoughts in our mind or urges so contamination is the obsessional thought and cleaning is our compulsion compulsion is the act which we perform to calm down our anxiety develop because of this contamination obsessions so this guy is washing his hands again and again hoarding is another example symmetry obsession with ordering compulsions uh, we have seen our mothers arranging our shirts and making our wardrobe and uh, or symmetry uh, symmetry and all such stuff but they are not all of them are suffering from ocd so obsessions without visible con con compulsion see this is something going on in his head and these are only just obsessions without any compulsions and these are harm obsessions with checking compulsion Uh, this uh, child has this obsession that have i turned off the gas tap or not uh, if if it remains open i am going to hurt someone or it will going to hurt someone the, the uh, now what are the content of obsession and compulsion so uh, what we have seen that there are different types or different contents of obsession uh, so what we have observed that checking is the most common one they go and check repeatedly have i locked the door have i switch off the light the checking is the most common one which has 63% and uh, washing is the second one with 50% uh, ratio rate and contamination is 45% uh, and doubting is 42% bodily fears 
counting again and again, 36%. Insistence on symmetry is 31%. And aggressive thoughts, 28%. So by this, we can understand that checking, compu checking compulsion is the commonest one with 63% uh, ratio. So what is the epidemiology of OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder? The lifetime prevalence of OCD is two to 3%. And it is the fourth most common psychiatric diagnosis. What else we have? Onset occurs uh, typically during adolescence or early childhood. We have specifically seen 19 to 21 years of age of adults reporting us but when we sort out the history we know that these have developed quite early like in, in the ages of uh, 13 14 years they ha they have started the symptoms appearing onset is earlier for males than in females and sex distribution is almost uh, equal so what is the ocd cycle obsessions anxiety compulsion and relief and again obsession anxiety compulsion relief so uh, they have given us the uh, example as well. Uh, unwanted distressing thoughts, urges, mental images may include what if and doubts. Uh, so uh, for your uh, understanding, if we have the obsession of uh, having my hands dirty, uh, it, it induces anxiety if I'm not going to wash my hands. So this obsession comes in my mind repeatedly. My hands are dirty. My hands are dirty. What, what, are, what am I supposed to do? So this anxiety is bothering me and it develops distress, fear, worry, and it has a false alarm that I need to do something. I'm restless. And when I go and wash my hair, like I perform the compulsion, the act of washing my hand, just to calm down that anxiety, it is known as compulsion. Okay, I get that relief. Oh my God, I am feeling better, not, uh, better now because my anxiety has settled and my hands are clean. But after some time, I again develop this obsession like, oh my God, my hands are dirty again and I need to wash them. So which follows by anxiety and I again go to the washroom, I wash my hand, I come down, I feel relieved, but again, these obsession come. So this is a cycle which is going on in, in the person suffering from OCD. So they do, uh, they do the compulsions, then again, the anxiety will develop itself and it's going on and on. So what are the comorbidities? We have seen that many of our uh, OCD patients have other abnormalities, other disorders as well. So what we have seen that the patient suffering from major depressive disorder along with OCD symptom is of 67%. So uh, if a person has OCD, there are 67% chances that he or she might be suffering from major depressive disorder as well. Another thing we have seen that the person suffering from OCD has a chance of 25% of developing social phobias. They have this social anxiety whenever they go in social or public places, they have this uh, phobia that uh, they might do something embarrassing in front of everyone. So uh, the the twenty five percent of the people with OCD have social phobias as well. Taurus uh, disorder is uh, also has a link with the uh, OCD, and five to seven percent of the OCD patient have Taurus disorder. Twenty to thirty percent of the patient with OCD have a history of tics. So you can see that OCD can occur with. Uh, other disorders as well. Now, what is uh, what are the causes of uh, this uh, OCD? So there are genetic causes, associated brain disorders, uh, brain imaging, and abnormal serotonin functions. So they have seen that the increase in first degree uh, rela relations, and it has increased risk with pump gene. What is from this is catechol or methyl transferase a gene which has a link with several different uh, psychiatric diseases and it has also been linked with OCD as well. Assorted brain disorder in cephalitis lethargica, Torres syndrome in childhood that all has been linked with OCD uh, in adult life and 70% of the cases of Schneiden's chorea have OCD symptoms 
and OCD has also linked to group A uh, streptococcus infection as well. On the brain imaging, we have seen increased volume of basal ganglia structures in OCD patients. Uh, what are the basal ganglia structures? Caudate nucleus and specifically thalamus. Uh, both have increased volume and uh, decreased volume of cortical structures, uh, anterior cingulate, orbitofrontal cortex. Uh, they have uh, their volume has been in, uh, decreased and the basal vol basal ganglia volume uh, increased in patients suffering from OCD. And maybe uh, it's, it has a strong link to corticostriatal thalamic loop as well. Abnormal serotonogenic function, OCD symptoms respond to drugs that increase. 5-HT function suggests that the 5-HT function might be abnormal in patients with OCD. So what is uh, uh, abnormal serotonogenic function? So what, have, uh, what they have just said is like when we give uh, SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor medications to the OCD patients, they respond very well to those. So that suggests that the 5-HT functions might be abnormal in OCD patients. <clears throat> so what is the ICD-10 criteria for OCD? The criteria for diagnosis OCD, we have to see that obsessional symptoms or compulsive acts or both must be present on most of the day for at least two successive weeks and be a source of distress or interference with daily activities. Uh, time period has given like at least for two successive weeks and, if, and it must be so distressful that it, it interferes with their daily activities. Number two, obsessional symptoms should have the following characteristics. They must be recognized as the individual's own thoughts or impulses. There must be at least one thought or act that is still restricted unsuccessfully even though others may be present, which the sufferers no longer resist. Okay, you need to understand that obsessional symptoms must be recognized as individual's own or personal thoughts or impulses. Okay, uh, patients, uh, you can ask the patients, do you think these thoughts are your own or it has been put by someone else or in your mind? Uh, they, they should say that it, these are my own thoughts, I own them. It's not from some somewhere out, okay? If they said so, this is this indicates that he has some uh, thought disorder, mainly seen in schizophrenia. And B, uh, in B, what they have said that there must be at least one thought, at least one thought or act that is still restricted. And, and you can resist all the thoughts, but at least one thought or act is still uh, resisted unsuccessfully. So ICD-10, uh, another criteria is the thought of carrying out the act must not it in, itself, in itself be pleasurable. Simple relief or tension or anxiety is not regarded as pleasure in this sense. What they're trying to say that these thoughts of carrying the act, acts are not pleasurable for the patients. Okay, uh, this, this, is, this, this work, uh, they are, if they are going to wash their hands again and again, this is not something they are feeling good about. They are in great misery of washing them again and again, just because uh, their thoughts are unstoppable and it kept on coming and coming. That's why they are doing this compulsive X. Otherwise, uh, it's not pleasurable at all. And D, the thoughts, images or impulses must be unpleasantly repetitive. Okay, it kept on coming and coming and coming, even after performing the X. So this are, uh, this, these are the symptoms, uh, these are the criteria for diagnosis. Uh, OCD. So uh, let's revise them once again. Obsession symptoms or compulsive X or both must be present on most of the day, at least for two successive weeks. Remember, at least for two successive weeks and be a source of distress. Okay. Obsessional symptoms have the following characteristic. Number one, and they have to be recognized as individuals own thoughts or impulses. Number two, and there must be at least one thought or act that is still resisted unsuccessfully. Okay, number three, the thought of carrying out is, un, is itself is not pleasurable activity at all. And the fourth one, the thought images are unpleasantly repetitive. Okay. So how will, how are we going to treat uh, OCD? So there are different treatment options uh, 
uh, for OCD, we have different medications. We have uh, we have a wider role of cognitive behavioral therapy, dynamic psychotherapy, neurosurgery, and deep brain stimulation. So, what are the first line drugs? Always remember that OCD is uh, is a disease uh, which need a, a longer duration uh, for treatment and uh, it, it required a higher doses to respond. Usually if we give our patient 20 to for take like uh, if I give a simple depression case 20 milligrams of fluoxetine uh, and his or her symptoms improve within two to three weeks but in OCD patient we need to give at least double of the dose or even we can go beyond this dose for treating OCD, it's, it's, it required a higher dosage. Like even we can give 60 milligrams of fluoxetine just to treat OCD. So SSRI have a major role in treating OCD symptoms. Clomipramine, it's a TCA. It also has significant role in treating uh, OCD symptoms. And if we see that the patient is not responding, even on higher doses, we, we need to augment our treatment plan. Uh, we will uh, we will going to uh, tell the patient to follow uh, his or her psychologist and attend daily sessions or whatever she or he or she uh, advise the patients to follow. Psychological treatment is very important and uh, medications are also important. So uh, if if we think that the patient is not responding to the psychological treatment and the medications, we need other treatment or we need to augment our treatment. Uh, we can consider another uh, antidepressant, like uh, other treatment, we, you can see it's a tylopram augmentation of clomipramine, okay? And antipsychotic for augmentation with SSRI, we can uh, add a little bit of antipsychotics along with the SSRI uh, the dosage. And clonazepam, clonazepam is a benzodiazepine and we can give it for a short term. Obviously, we cannot give it for a long time as it has a dependence potential. So these are the augmentation strategies for uh, for the treatment of OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. And there are many other experimental treatments uh, have been going on. Uh, like we can give duloxetine and venlafax and SNRIs for, for the treatment of OCD. We can give the spiron we can give anti-androgen and clomipramine IV pulse load. It's an all, also an uh, experimental treatment. What is the psychotherapy uh, for OCD patients? Obviously, we can give cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, for OCD patients, we can uh, tell them to uh, consult a psychologist and uh, start the treatment uh, along with the medici medicines. Um, thought is uh, stopping is another strategy used by a psychotherapist. Exposure and response prevention. Uh, this, this is a particular uh, therapy which the psychologists usually use to treat OCD symptoms. So these are the op options available in psychotherapy for patients who are, who are who need uh, who are in need of treatment? So remember that obsessions are defined as the unwanted intrusive thoughts, images, or urges that repeatedly enters the person's mind. Again, the compulsions are repeat repetitive behaviors, mental acts that perform that the person feels driven to perform. This is the difference between obsession and compulsions, okay? Obsession rituals and ruminations, doubts, obsession impulses, subtypes of OCD, what, what we have seen OCD with obsessive compulsive uh, uh, disorders in, in which we have seen symmetry obsessions and we can see contamination obsession, harm obsessions and hoarding. Epidemiology in which we have learned that the lifetime prevalence is two to three percent, and it's the fourth most common common psychiatric diagnosis. 
the OCD cycle is very important. You need to understand that the obsessions followed by anxiety and when we perform the compulsions, uh, anxiety settles for a while and we feel relief. But again, the obsessions will start coming and coming and it induces anxiety. So this is a vicious circle and which is going on in the brain of that OCD patient. Comorbidities are common, major depressive disorder, social phobia, Tourette syndrome and tics disorder. The genetics, we have seen uh, increased chances in first degree uh, relatives. Com gene has an uh, important role. There are certain diseases, uh, brain disease disorders, which are linked with OCD. In brain images, we have seen the difference in volume of different structures and abnormal serotonin function. The ICT-10 criteria is like you have to remember that the symptoms are present most of the day for at least two weeks, two successive weeks, and a source of distress. And uh, they must be recognized as individuals' own thoughts. Okay. And uh, they're still resistant and unsuccessfully, one, one thought at least. And it is unpleasurable carrying out these acts. It is unpleasurable. OCD में हम जरूर ये बात पूछते हैं that the patient के आपको ये लगता है कि ये सोचें आपकी अपनी हैं या आपके दिमाग में किसी और ने डाली हैं तो patient का answer क्या होता है if he is suffering from OCD ये मेरी अपनी सोचें हैं what is CBD CBD is cognitive behavioral therapy okay we work in cognitive behavioral therapy it's a topic of psychology लेकिन हम क्या करते हैं अब आपने देखा होगा कि that we are using this term repeatedly and in this anxiety lecture, CBT is cognitive behavioral therapy. So, it is a knowledge hai ke, uh, as its name indicates, cognitive cognitions kya hoti hai, are thinking patterns and behavior. So, we, we observe that in research is that our thinking pattern hai, it affects our behaviors. If I have a bad thing, this is something. Uh, ये मेरी cognitions हैं तो in CBD we work the psychologists work on their cognitions okay and which if, if I change their cognition their it affects their behavior and it it ultimately हमारा goal क्या है कि he might think in a good pattern and a good behavior will observe okay so I hope it, it makes some sense to you uh, direct method it uh, it is possible that the person get rid of obsession and compulsion or just lifelong disorder Okay, so what I said that uh, obsession OCD is quite, I have seen uh, it's a difficult disorder to treat, but there are chances that the patient, uh, you have seen there are certain people, certain patients which respond very well to the treatment and they comply.
at times when when a stress is followed or something like that and their symptoms re-emerge. So we have seen that the patients might develop uh, these symptoms followed by some stressful events. So uh, if the treatment and the prognosis depend upon on patients as well. Okay, how much the patient is complying medication and how much he is following your advice? Okay, number one. Number two, what is the nature of his or her diseases? You have to see that the patient the patient is taking the medications or not. Is he complying what you what the psychologist has said so? If he or she is following that, that makes sense improve karega and you're going to develop some improvement. Uh, and what we have seen that uh, it ha it has a prolonged course, it is difficult to treat, and that shows the prognosis is not very much very good. Again, but huh, still patients survive and they improved. Any other queries? Any other questions, please? Please uh, explain point three. Can you tell us some self-help books? Yes, you can get those from uh, from our department, and you can uh, self guidance guidance hoti hai uske andar. They said ke bhai agar aapko achanak se jo hota hai panic attack ho jaye and you are in a situation, so how you can handle your anxiety at that time and what you need to understand. It's uh, it's available, Sidra. You can come and uh, collect those. Uh, self book, uh, self books जो होती हैं, recommended. अब हम anxiety के बारे में बात कर रहे हैं, तो anxiety से ही related होगी. How to calm down your anxiety uh, and how to, मतलब patient need to understand कि what anxiety is. If I'm having this, you, patient reports to you like, मुझे कुछ होता है, मुझे बहुत घबराहट होती है, मुझे ऐसा लगता है, and he perceives like कि मैं मर जाऊंगा इस वक्त इतनी एक्सट्रीम एंजाइटी हो रही होती है उन लोगों को तो उस सिचुएशन में मेडिकेशंस विल गोइंग टू वर्क बट फॉर दैट मोमेंट दैट पर्टिकुलर मोमेंट हम पेशेंट्स को कुछ एडवाइस कुछ समझाते भी हैं और कुछ मटेरियल भी प्रोवाइड करते हैं कि ये पढ़ो भाई इसमें से अगर तुम इस तरह से होता है तो यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड कि भाई क्या क्या चीज हो रही है क्या हो रहा है उसके अंदर हम कैसे रिस्पॉन्ड कर सकते हैं ठीक है और किस तरह से ये सिम्टम्स को फॉर दैट Period, particular period. आप किस तरह से उनको anxiety को अपनी काम डाउन कर सकते हैं? External sources, external sources. Uh, किस के बारे में external sources? हर चीज की ना book available होती है. Like psycho education is very important part. आपको patients को aware कराना होता है उनकी problem के बारे में. If they are neurotic, they know what they are suffering from. ठीक है और family को भी बताने में तो आप depression के लिए अलग self help books होती हैं anxiety के लिए अलग होती हैं ये छोटी-छोटी books available होती हैं जो के हर ज़बान में होती हैं like हमारे patient अगर इतना educated नहीं है तो we can provide them in English or Urdu so that they can understand. It's for the patients benefit तो ये patients के लिए होती हैं and they can be provided. External source, uh, if I'm not wrong, you are asking about ये जो हम anxiety के लिए कर रहे हैं कि external source किस चीज का external source I'm not getting it. External source that will in insert such thoughts in mind of patients. External, I I I don't know कि आप लोगों ने इसके जो फैनिया पढ़ा है कि नहीं पढ़ा है बट इफ पर्सन सेस कि ये मेरी अपनी दिमाग की सोच है मेरे दिमाग में खुद आ रही है कि मेरे हाथ गंदे हैं ठीक है तो ये मेरी जेनरेटेड बाय माय ओन माइंड मेरे दिमाग में खुद ये बात बताई है एक्सटर्नल सोर्स में वो बोलता है कि कोई भी कोई सुपर नेचुरल पावर है या जो इसके जो फेनिया के मरीज होते हैं वो आपको ये बोलते हैं कि भाई किसी ने मेरे दिमाग में डाली है थ्रू इंटरनेट थ्रू रेडियो एक्टिव वेव थ्रू कुछ भी एक वेक सा एक बड़ा मतलब आपको अनरियलिस्टिक सा वो एक सोर्स बताते हैं तो इसके जो फ्रेंड्स जो साइकोटिक पेशेंट्स होते हैं वो ये बात बताते हैं कि भाई ये कोई एक्सटर्नल सोर्स आया है जिसने मेरे दिमाग में ये थॉट्स डाल दिए हैं कि तुम्हारे हाथ गंदे हैं 
ठीक है अगर पेशेंट ये बोलता है दिस इज वॉट एक्सटर्नल सोर्स इज ओके ये मेरे ये मेरी अपनी सोच नहीं है वो सोच को ओन नहीं करता थॉट्स आर सोच ना ओके तो वो कहते हैं कि नहीं ये मेरे दिमाग में किसी और ने डाला है समवन एल्स हैज पुट दैट थिंकिंग इन माय माइंड और दिस थॉट्स आर हैव बीन पुट इन माय माइंड बाय सम एक्सटर्नल सोर्स सम सम सुपरनेचुरल पावर्स व्हिच डजंट मेक सेंस टू यू ठीक है कैसे आपके दिमाग में कोई और कोई अपनी सोच किस तरह से इंसर्ट कर सकता है थॉट इंसर्शन में तो ये ज्यादातर इसके जो फ्रेनिक्स बोल रहे होते हैं कि मेरे दिमाग में जो सोचे हैं वो मेरी अपनी नहीं है और मेरे दिमाग में किसी और ने डाली है तो वो एक्सटर्नल सोर्स कुछ भी हो सकता है वो किसी भी एक वो पानी की बोतल को देख के बोल सकते हैं कि भाई इससे मेरे दिमाग में आई है तो इट कैन बी एनी थिंग जो कि बहुत अनरियलिस्टिक होती है या आपको लगता है कि यार ये किस तरह की बातें कर रहा है ठीक है इनर इनर सोर्स में तो हम ये बोलते हैं ना कि दिस इज माई ओन थॉट मैं उन्हें ओन कर रही हूँ मैं बोल रही हूँ कि मेरे दिमाग हमारे दिमाग में सोचे हमारी अपनी है ना या कोई हमारे दिमाग में सोचे पुट कर सकता है ओके okay, तो इस तरह से कोई पुट नहीं कर सकता अगर कोई पेशेंट इस तरह की बात कर रहा है कि किसी एक्सटर्नल सोर्स से मेरे दिमाग में ये बात आई है दैट मीन्स के उसको कोई और वो किसी और चीज को ऐसे कह रहा है दैट डजेंट मेक सेंस टू यू ओके वो एक्सटर्नल सोर्स होते हैं समझ में आया Any other questions, please? Look, anxiety disorders जो हैं इनके अंदर जो अगर हमने ओ सी डी को रिवाइज कर लिया लेकिन एनजाइटी डिसऑर्डर को हमने रिविजन नहीं किया सो एनजाइटी डिसऑर्डर में वी हैव सीन दैट द पेशेंट मे हैव दिस एंशियस एनजाइटी थिंग्स मुझे कुछ हो रहा है मुझे कुछ हो रहा है एकदम ऑल ऑफ अ सडन ही डिवेलप एनजाइटी वाली जो चीजें शुरू हो जाती हैं पैनिक करने लगता है पेशेंट हमेशा याद रखना कि डिफरेंट डिफरेंट चीजें होती हैं एंजाइटी के अंदर ठीक है अगर हम ये देखें इसके अंदर हमारा इनिशियल था प्लीज रिमेम्बर एंजाइटी अवॉइडेंस बहुत है ठीक है और जो कुछ हुआ नहीं है दे आर वरिड अबाउट देयर फ्यूचर ओके फ्यूचर के बारे में जब ज्यादा थिंकिंग होती है उन लोगों में एंजाइटी इज वेरी कॉमन अगेन एगेरोफोबिया एगेरोफोबिया इज वॉट एगेरोफोबिया उन सिचुएशन में उसको एंजाइटी होना पैनिक होना जहां से उसके लिए स्केप करना मुश्किल है ओके okay? वो पब्लिक प्लेसेस से कहीं से निकल के भाग नहीं सकता दैट्स वाई ही अवॉइड दोज प्लेसेस वो ट्रेवल अलोन नहीं कर सकता अवे फ्रॉम द होम क्योंकि उसे डर होता है कि कुछ हो जाएगा मुझे सो ही अवॉइड ट्रेवलिंग अवे फ्रॉम द होम सो दीज दीज आर एगेरोफोबिक सिम्टम्स जो क्लस्ट्रोफोबिया होता है जो लिफ्ट के अंदर लोग नहीं जाते हैं कि उन्हें बंद होता है सफोकेशन होती है इट्स ऑल्सो कम्स अंडर द हेरिंग ऑफ एगेरोफोबिया क्योंकि लिफ्ट में क्या फीलिंग आ रही होती है कि ये क्लोज स्पेस है बंद स्केप है बंद प्लेस है एंड आई कैन नॉट स्केप फ्रॉम दिस प्लेस सो दिस इज अ गैरोफोबिया ओके एंड ही अवॉइड मतलब आप देखने के लोग चार चार पांच पांच फ्लोर जो है वो सीढ़ियों से चढ़ जाते हैं स्टेयर केस से बट दे अवॉइड गोइंग थ्रू द लिफ्ट सो दिस इज अ गैरोफोबिया सोशल फोबिया हमेशा सिचुएशन ऐसी होंगी जहां पर उसको ये होगा कि मैं कोई एम्बेरसिंग एक्ट ना कर दू ब्लश करने लगेगा उसको एंजाइटी शुरू हो जाएगी लोगों से बात करते में घबराएगा इतनी ज्यादा एंजाइटी होगी कि भाई उसको लगेगा ओ माय गॉड एम शायद मैं या तो डेफिकेट कर दूं या मैं यूरिनेट कर दूं कोई मैं एम्बेरसिंग एक्ट करना कर दूं इन लोगों के सामने सो ही अवॉइड गोइंग टू सच प्लेसेस इन सोशल फोबिया स्पेसिफिक फोबिया मुझे डॉग से डर लगता है तो मैं अवॉइड करूंगी उस रस्ते को जहां पर बहुत सारे डॉगीज खड़े होते हैं क्यों क्योंकि भाई सिर्फ स्पेसिफिक उस डॉग से डर लगता है तो मैं मैं सिर्फ रस्तों का अवॉइड कर रही मैं और कहीं पे जाने से अवॉइडेंस नहीं है मेरी सो so, जहां मुझे पता है कि भाई हाइट से मुझे फोबिया है तो मैं हाइट वाली प्लेसेस पे जाने से स्पेसिफिक होता है रिस्ट्रिक्टेड टू द प्रेजेंस ऑफ द पर्टिकुलर फोबिक ऑब्जेक्ट और सिचुएशन एंड अवॉइडेंस इज कॉमन अवॉइडेंस हमने देखा कि हर एंजाइटी डिसऑर्डर में अवॉइडेंस जरूर है उस उन जगहों को लोग अवॉइड करते हैं जाने से पैनिक पैनिक कैन अगर ऑल ऑफ अ सडन कहीं पे भी किसी भी जगह पे पैनिक डिसऑर्डर हो सकता है लेकिन पैनिक डिसऑर्डर को डायग्नोज करने के लिए वो कहते हैं कि आपके लिए सीवियर छोटे छोटे अटैक्स आपके एक मन में बहुत सारे एंजाइटी के होने चाहिए टू डायग्नोज पैनिक डिसऑर्डर और उसमें कोई आपको बोलते हैं कोई ऑब्जेक्टिव डेंजर ना हो मतलब ना कोई डॉग है वहां पे ना कहीं हाइट पे लेके जा रहे हैं बस उसको ऑल ऑफ अ सडन बिस्तर पर बैठा है घर में हो गया उसको पैनिक अटैक डिसऑर्डर तब हम कहेंगे ओके okay, यहाँ पे कहीं बंद भी नहीं है कि 
کسی لفٹ میں بھی نہیں جا کر لفٹ میں رہا ہے کبھی نہیں ہو رہا مطلب اسپیسیفک نہیں ہے سچویشن تو یہاں پہ اوائڈنس نہیں ہے اتنی زیادہ اس وہ جنرلی اوائڈ کر رہا ہوتا ہے کیونکہ وہ اتنا گھبرا جاتا ہے کہ مجھے تو کہیں پہ کبھی بھی اٹیک ہو جاتا ہے اس لیے وہ گھبراہٹ سے اوائڈ باہر ہی نکلنے سے اوائڈ کر رہے ہوتے ہیں مگر ایسا نہیں کہ وہ کسی پرٹیکولر سچویشن میں جانے سے اوائڈ کر ہوتے ہیں دے سیڈ اینٹیسپیٹری اینزائٹی از کامن واٹ از اینٹیسپیٹری اینزائٹی میں ابھی اس سچویشن میں گئی نہیں ہوں بٹ آئی ایم اینٹیسپیٹنگ ڈریز کہ بھائی میں وہاں جاؤں گی تو مجھے کچھ ہو نہ جائے اس کے لیے مجھے رات سے انزائٹی شروع ہو گئی مجھے گھبراہٹ ہو رہی ہے کل صبح جانا ہے کل صبح جانا ہے اوکے جنرلائز میں جنرلائز کے اندر کیا ہو رہا ہوتا ہے کہ آپ کو پرائمری سمٹم جو ہے وہ موسٹ آف دا ڈے سیورل ویکس سے آپ کے پاس پیشنٹ بہت دیر میں پریزینٹ کر رہا ہوتا ہے اس میں بھی اگین اس کو اپریہنشن بہت ہوتی ہے موٹر ٹینشن بہت ہوتی ہے آٹونومک اوور ایکٹیویٹی بہت ہوتی ہے لیکن یہ جنرلائز ہوتی ہے یہ پورا دن چلتی رہتی ہے اور اس کے اندر ورنگ تھاٹس مس فارچون نیگیٹو تھنکنگ یہ مستقل ہو رہا ہوتا ہے اور یہ اس کی ڈیلی فنکشننگ کو اتنا ڈسٹریسفل کر دیتی ہے کہ وہ آپ کے پاس یوزلی رپورٹ کرتا ہے بٹ آفٹر لانگ ٹائم مطلب وہ بہت دیر خود مینج کرنے کی کوشش کرتے ہیں جب نہیں ہوتا تو آپ کے پاس آ جاتے ہیں جنرلائز مطلب وہ کہیں پہ کبھی بھی کسی بھی وقت ہو سکتا ہے جنرلی ہے وہ سو دس از آل اباؤٹ انزائٹی ڈس آڈر اوکے اینڈ آبسیسو کمپلسو ڈس آڈر آئی ہوپ کہ آپ لوگوں کو سمجھ میں آیا ہوگا انزائٹی سے کچھ ریلیٹڈ کچھ کسی کو کوشچنس کرنے اوکے سو آئی آپ لوگوں کو سمجھ میں آ گیا ہوگا آل آف یو ہیو انڈرسٹینڈ ہیو ایک ریڈ لگائیں آپ لوگ ایک بک میں سے ریڈ کریں اینڈ دین اف یو ہیو اینی پرابلم یو کین آسک می